And welcome. I'm Fo Sung Elizabeth Cookie of Goddesses Media. I'm your main host and presenter of Mythological Moments. And to the right of me is the CEO of Strike First Gaming himself, Cobra Kai Tone. To the right of him is hip hop extraordinaire, Dr. B Galaxy B. And then to the left of me is pro cosplayer, Kitty Kaboom. So today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not going to have any news feed. We're going to get right into our presenter topics. So What's going on in the toy collecting world of your toy box, Tone? What do you have to share with us this time around? Okay, all right, I always show toys off and I wanted to switch up again and show you something else in my collection. You know I love art, so I wanted to talk a little bit about original art. So when you're talking original art, um, we can get into different things. You know, there's all, all kind of mediums. You can do poster boards, there's uh, comic books, there's uh, comic book boards, there's anything an artist wants to draw on. It's original art. So uh, I wanted to just talk a little bit about some things I do collect, like um, animation cells. Okay. Uh, anime cells, animation celluloid. So I, um, this is the way that animation was done before digital. You got nice. the clear, uh, the clear sheet of paper. You ink or illustrate on that, and uh, you put it on the background, and then you take a photo, and then you do the next frame and the next frame until you piece all the frames together. And how many frames a second you're gonna make that animation? It gets a smooth motion. So I collect those. Uh, I have a little bit of some Dragon Ball Z. I have some Bubblegum Crisis. Oh, yeah. Wow. I have my favorite some, anime. Uh, I have some uh, things like RoboCop, Earthworm Jim, anything that the, you know, cartoons that were, I, I don't know when it went full digital, but uh, before then. And um, also on other original artwork, you can get into sketch art from comic book artists or your animation artists. Um, there are things like comic books um, where, depending on how popular the artist is, the price tag on the uh, value of the actual art. So something, you know, from Clayton Crane versus Stan Lee would be a big difference. Clayton Crane is a very beautiful artist. His work is great, but Stan Lee is the, especially the late, rest in peace, Stan Lee. It's more rare. You won't get any new, uh, new artwork from him. So that sketch work will be more expensive. So things like that, that factor in to the art. Um, what I'm going to show you today is, is a comic book artwork which is inside of the comic book so you get the big or well, let me just show you let me show you kind of like the oh, splash pages <laughs> yes Dude. so you get something All like right. this okay where you have this is actual special this is a two page so this costs mm -hmm. a little bit extra you usually just get one page so you get the board and then they you get the pencil or pencil and ink and this is kind of like what they originally did anyway they storyboarded it out before they actually bring it to comic book production so this is just the remake um this one i bought from southern california comics over in san diego these uh they're really reputable makes you want to be from a reputable source also that was a reputable source the guy over there was the um authenticator for the pawn stars for all their comic book work and stuff like that for a lot of years so this is aquaman uh, issue number 68 page 21 and page 22 and this is not Aquaman but this is someone showing a newcomer uh, flying over Atlantis or swimming over Atlantis and she's in awe about the spectacle she sings none of them convey how magnificent it is you know what I mean this is a awesome. very beautiful piece um, you can catch all kind of things this was 500 because it was two pieces uh, I have things from Punisher that were like 189. Um, there are things that are really rare that go all the way up to my maybe 1500 to 15,000 on these things. So uh, just got to know what you're looking for, how rare it is. Um, do your homework. I still have homework to do on this because I still got to go figure out who the artist is because I didn't write it down. So next time I'm down in San Diego, I'm going to go pay Southern California Comics a visit and then he'll be able to explain everything about this piece to me and I'll have everything jotted down. So when I do resell or just want to, you know, explain somebody about it, I can give you more information. But uh, I'm a big collector on just original art, especially because it's just a little bit more rare. It's fun to have, and it's something to brag about. And this is one of my bragging pieces. Cool, awesome. So nice I remember piece. something that you mentioned that kind of hit a hit a special note with me was about um, anime cells, how they would draw on the plastic, mm -hmm. ink them, 
and and of course erase them and then do it over again. I remember a good friend of mine named Rob Miles once told me about when Japanese anime studios were on low budget and they didn't have the money to produce a lot of the animation. They would use the same materials over and over and over. Mm. AIC is a, a company in Japan which is very known for Bubblegum Crisis, also known for a lot of older anime. Did this, did this over and over as they produced a lot of anime that was just stellar has a lot of resale value right now as a lot of the older anime has moved digital or they re-digitized everything and moved it to Blu-ray and DVD. Mm -hmm. Not everybody knows those stories from the very beginnings of mm -hmm. how they created or the construction process of those anime. And then the, origin, the originals of those cells don't always exist. And the ones that do exist sell for exuberant amounts of money to anime collectors like us. Yep. Oh yes. So. Especially the Mega Man ones. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, so um, you can catch uh, some of these like animation cells. Um, animation Legends has a lot of uh, 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 cartoons that aired in America from G.I. Joe, Transformers, uh, Fat Albert to RoboCop to you name it, uh, Earthworm Jim, things like that. Nice. Um, they also have animation cell uh, seller websites, a lot of them from Japan, and that's who I think I would go to for a lot of my animation stuff. Uh, for like manga and things like that mm -hmm. so okay well awesome well thank you for sharing with us what's going on in your toy box thank you moving forward all right miss kitty what's <laughs> going on in the world of cosplay and video gaming and plushies what do you, what do you have for us what do you have um, for us actually i'm gonna talk a little bit about cosplay because okay. i've noticed lately that a lot of anime conventions are in talks again mm -hmm. for coming back and being open to the public again instead of being virtual like they all had to do last year right i don't know about you guys but with everything that has happened, I am still concerned about the health and safety because, A, let's face it, as much as we need people handing out, you know, deodorant and sanitizer before all of this happens, we need it even more now at conventions. What are we going to be doing in the future? What are conventions going to be doing in the future moving forward to help protect the hundreds and thousands of anime and cosplayers and all the guests that come to the convention. Because mm -hmm. you and I both know, we've all been talking, as soon as the floodgates open, we're going to Japan. Right. And I know when the first back to in real life conventions start happening, there's just going to be twice as many people. Because mm -hmm. everybody has been dying for over, you know, the last year to go back to conventions and have the cosplay life. Um, I'd really, really hope that all of these big companies, the ones that are running Fanime and AX, everyone just kind of lays down the laws they never did before. When I would run a few of the um, local SoCal anime cons, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if any of our staff reeked like they haven't bathed in a <laughs> hot minute, <laughs> I would go and let their supervisor know, hey, whoever's working the hospitality desk right now, they need to take a shower. They they smell really, really bad. So you mm. need to go talk to them. And we would actually lay down the law because we did not want our staff to smell terrible or, you know, not be taking appropriate hygiene steps. And this was an issue. And that person did get mad, but they were told, hey, you go to your room and you shower or we take your badge and you're not going to volunteer. Right. And not only for staff, but also for attendees. Mm. We need to lay this down right. going forward, opening up conventions again. Mm -hmm. You guys, I'm, I'm very, very, you know, sure that I'm, I'm confident in all of these conventions can get sponsorships from, I don't know, Axe, Dove you know old spice they used to they used to give there was one year at uh san diego comic-con where they were actually giving out san diego comic-con bars of soap mm -hmm. i think it was like okay. 2004 2005 right and those, those I, bars go for now <laughs> i don't know but if somebody I didn't think open I have it. someone's I, was, I have one somewhere it's probably melted by now but they were actually <laughs> giving those out so we just need to take the proper steps because I, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of scared. 
I'm actually concerned. I've been at my booth. I've been, you know, a cosplay guest and I've had a table and I've had people come up and talk to me. And while they are talking to me, they've constantly like spit on my table. It's wow. landed on my face before. It's landed on my arms and they see it and I see it. And because I don't want to upset or embarrass anybody, you know, I'll just, mm hmm. Oh, that's so interesting. Yes, you know, and, and they still don't get it. And they're still, you know, just throwing all that spit out there. And we really need to have this stop. It's just from now on, because of COVID and everything that's happened, if that ever happens again, I'm just going to let them know. Because I'm at the point where this is a safety, this is a health issue. So mm. it, it seems like you're kind of addressing manners, mannerisms, and hygiene all at the same time. Um, the idea of you know, interacting socially and then somebody talking mm -hmm. and then they're spraying saliva all over you sounds more like an overexcited fan or overexcited attendee. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I guess I'm a little bit different. I'm a little bit more straightforward as I would, you know, really convey to those people, kind of say it, don't spray it mentality. Right, right, right. You know, we you really can. do need to go back to say it, don't spray it. That's, uh, we need to bring that back. But personally, I haven't had an issue like mm -hmm. that. Like I've, once in a blue at conventions and video gaming tournaments and anime conventions and sporting events, I've 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 smelt a couple of arms be musty, you know. Oh yeah. I've, and I've and I've I've seen some people that wasn't didn't smell too coof, you know. Right, right. Well, see, see, for me, it was uh, it wasn't the smell of under, uh, armpits. It was the, the the smell of wet socks. Oh. Ooh, that's the one that gets me. It's like someone in here is not. It's not on point, yeah. I've had a higher tolerance to a lot of these things. Um, the, it hasn't really bothered me. I guess if I was to talk about the etiquette of attendees, I would say it's the, the bumping into me. Uh, you know, the concept mm -hmm. of road rage is when you're angry on the road. I came up with something in my own vocabulary known as walker's rage. <laughs> no, really. Walker's rage. Because I love I, that I, game. No, because I feel like if walker's you don't know how rage. to walk, you possibly have problems knowing how to drive right, right because right. if we're if we're walking in a specific direction and you're on let's say way over there on the off beaten path i'm here how okay. did you come All from the way from there over here and just and ram still into you there you go and still bump into me i don't understand the, the, those dynamics there they right. are too busy oh. looking at all of the con figures and everything they want to buy like right. everybody is always like this no matter if it's a uh, san diego comic-con or an anime convention like mm -hmm. nobody ever pays attention to where they're walking right. this is why i will never wear cosplays anymore at sdcc on busy days because your costume's just gonna get torn to shreds oh, yeah but uh just you know i I gotta say, this is kind of a concern for me going back to conventions. I want to mm. make sure everybody is constantly sanitizing mm -hmm. escalators, steps, every single door that people come in and out of. Yeah. You know, what are, what are we going to do? Sanitize and spray down seats after each panel? Mm -hmm. like, I feel like these are nice, clean steps like the convention should be taking in the future. Definitely. I think they have the same concerns as you. I think they want to protect their brand and make sure that everyone is safe just like you so mm -hmm. let's hope they're smart i mean they are smart they you know these conventions made it to the top for a reason they have good mm -hmm. management and staff mm -hmm. so yeah so i just you know moving forward please conventions when you start going back to having the doors open and conventions going back to in real life let's lay down some a good you know set of rules and guidelines cosplayers attendees and everybody else in between can actually follow at these events and i think it would be great to get some sponsors for you know hand sanitizers and wipes and things like that for these conventions too Breathmas. just just slap anime characters on them boom they'll sell out there you go everybody right. be happy to take them and That's i was all thinking that do. they need to um you know take it a step further and just have sanitizing stations little little pod stations mm -hmm. out in between the brackets and like where people are playing in the tournaments at then everyone could just kind of like wipe their hands there, pick up wipes. Um, wipe down joysticks uh, Yeah, things. stuff like that, like yeah. actual sanitation stations, like mm -hmm. stationed all throughout the tournaments. That's like one good step. Um, having like masks dispensary for people who forget yes. their mask outside or drop them or throw them away. Um, simple things like gloves, um, uh -huh. just, you know, they, they have to take this into consideration. Just add it into your budget. You know, I know that's quote, you know, easier said than done, but no, to get this stuff is really, 
you can dip into a little bit of your profit pool. For well, it, so. also we have to uh, respect that if there's an increase on the price on these tickets, that it's mm -hmm. going to PPE. So we can't exactly. just complain about it. We have to make sure we're safe. So if there and is a price increase, that. I honestly would be fine doing that. If if you know you're going to raise it a few bucks so everybody can have access to PPE, that's great. Along Shows with. You care. I would say along with having adequate staff that would maintain those PPE stations yes. and refill them when they go to zero. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, most people forget about the maintenance part. Just want to add that in. Oh, yeah. Yes. The bathroom but, at the end of these conventions. Oh, oh Lord. Yeah, exactly. That's a whole other story. <laughs> but anyways, let's, let's go on to something even better. It's now time for a quick little treat fighter. Treat fighter. You think it's a game, but it's not. Guess what? This is from the Capcom store. Uh -oh. Another gift from my buddy Ken San. We have different Capcom character cookies. Oh, oh cool. Oh, God, right man. now. Oh, you're not hungry? No, I got the munchies. Oh, I, I want one. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Anytime <laughs> you, you bring, it, anytime it's Street sure, Fighter, sure. I'm ready. <laughs> That's my favorite part of the show now. Right, right. <laughs> she, she's going to use the sacred box cutter to yes, open it. The I've sacred been waiting box cutter. For, you know, well, in my time. case, the Imperial box cutter. Last time was perfect. Special, this is going to be double KO. A oh my God. time to open this up and share with friends. <laughs> Another treat fighter? I mean, this is better uh, than Christmas. Trust me, I want to keep treat fighter going. So if anybody out there has any suggestions for treats or knows a guy that can send us some treats to try yep. that are video game inspired, yep. uh, send them my way. Kitty Kaboom cosplay on Instagram. Hit her. <laughs> Fang. Make sure, and make sure you send an extra box for Galaxy B. Just don't trust the Fang you cookies. Know. Make sure. <laughs> <laughs> don't trust the what? <laughs> fang cookies. <laughs> All, right. All right. Maybe they're not cookies. Maybe Why is it? Oh, oh, these are so cute. Oh. They're mints. Yo, they're yeah, they... candy. What? what? Yeah, that is so like mint. candy. Oh. Oh my gosh, you guys, these are adorable. You guys can eat Ryu, okay? I'm saving all the others. <laughs> Look oh at how cute those Lord. are. Pass those around first. Oh, yeah, a, a Chun Li man, oh, Ryu man. Proto, Proto man, this is Proto all man Capcom. I think this is a jury, they have jury Han man. From Okami. They have like a bunch of cute stuff in there. Oh, it's, it's, Cap, it's Capcom mixed. Yeah. yeah it's beautiful, 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 beautiful Joe. Yes. Beautiful, the beautiful Joe. They got beautiful yeah, Joe. Beautiful yeah. Joe there. You can see all the characters on the box. So oh, oh, what is this? Uh, what is the protector? Oh, that's Amaterasu. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. really dope. Let's try these. I like this. I'm ready. I'm for like, can yeah, I get I'm the Chun Li mint? Of course. You, who else is gonna get the Chun Li mint? Come on. Treat I, I want the I want the Chun Li mint. <laughs> Treat fighter. That's cool. You know, for oh, what you're wow. presenting reminds me of a long time ago when I went to the Capcom Cafe right. in Shinjuku. Shinjuku had a Capcom Cafe, yeah, and the menu the menu was specialized based upon all these different Capcom games. Which one of the characters we got over here? I'm taking Proto Man. Proto Man. You Thank you. Proto Man. I, Proto -Man. Would you like a Ryu or I will take else? a Ryu. You can take a Ryu. Before I, I will take a Ryu. Just before I devour this one on this segment. One? Well, yeah. Thank okay. you. This men do what? Well, well, caution. Do we do this now? Because we're gonna be slurping all over the microphones. You know what? We'll save it to the end. But at least yes. you have your character. So this is this, is fire. this has been another little treat fighter segment. Very cool. And well, again, thank you to my buddy Ken out in Japan for getting me this in this cute little collector box, and I am going to enjoy this later. Thank with you, you guys. Of course. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Of course. Thank you. All right. We're back. Let's get Ed, it popping. Moving forward, what's going on in your world, Dr. B? Hey, you know, so we back, you know, I got two things today, you know what I'm saying? Two things to do. Um, first, we're going to bring it back to the clothing, you know what I'm saying? And you can find dope pieces like this at reddiamondsclothingstore.com. Um, but this is one of the ice cream teas that just came out in the new season. It's fire. Um, their fire is dope. And there's something special about this. This one has a Japanese kanji for ice cream on it. Check it out. So, let's go ahead. We'll have Cookie proofread this. Boom. So, go ahead and zoom in on that. It has like the little, yeah, see that? That's fire. And it says ice cream oh, right there. Man, I'm taking clean. that to Japan next time I go. It's going to be hit with the ladies. You already know. So, make sure you pick this up. Red Diamonds Clothing Store or on the internet where you can still find one. I like the I like retro the it's, bikini it's, anime right? girls it looks on so there. Like That's speed cute. Racer. Yeah, I was just going to say it's uh, very speed racer. So, I like it. You know, so, that's the first piece. Thank you very much. 
Second one we're going to get into, it's on me right now. Um, I'm wearing my new glasses line. Yes, it's the Galaxy B, Galaxy B glasses. So, they're hot. You know what I'm saying? They're named after me, but they're from Rich Kid Academy Clothing, sold exclusively on reddiamondsclothingstore.com. We got them coming soon. Kitty Kaboom's going to be rocking them. Oh, wow. Everyone's going to be rocking them. I mean, they're so futuristic. They're hot. Um, I love them. It's inspired off of Neo Tokyo and like the whole holographic visor things that everyone wears and like all the anime and manga. So and I that's kinda something was, I noticed. And that's I found a way to kind of bring it into fashion in the current day. And I like that it's just one piece and it's just very translucent holographic. Um, it looks crazy. It's like a hologram no, glasses, have, and it comes. They in, have a big anime feel, and, and it, I already tried them on, right? so I will tell you, I. I'm probably taking those home, so <laughs> he's already been these. worn a couple times. I'm stashing these. Um, so we have them coming in, like the pink lemonade color. We got a color called the Chadwick Bossmans. Um, they're kind of like the honey brown tone. We got the all black. Nice. And um, I might be bringing out a couple other colors, like the blueberry color and um, another green color. So stay tuned, everybody. So to get Were there. these glasses that you that you had manufactured or did what what did you so did basically you um there's you know i don't give away all my magic or what have you but i contacted a glasses company and um i basically found the design that i liked and um i just found a certain colorways that i wanted to buy out and then i, I got the quote for how many, many i want and then bam that's how we do it and then we're gonna be doing a little branding rich Kid academy and red diamonds and it's coming out soon you know what i'm saying we got some really nice. dope shit coming and the uh the pink and the blue and mm -hmm. the black and the brown pairs are really dope they just kind of have this whole 2090 3000 whole vibe yeah them, so. i was gonna say that those are so right on point with 2021 futuristic numbers right man. right and uh and like kitty was saying um you know a lot of glasses people wear it just doesn't look as good on their mm -hmm. face anyone can wear these from kid to adult woman man anyone in between it's like even a Aliens are rocking this, so if, if I like, you know what I'm saying, if Every, I even like aliens, them, then yes. right? And, and I think I, I would even see uh, Lieutenant Commander Data rocking these, like you know, Jordy LaForge. Everyone's rocking these. I think I think Grogu has a pair. Grogu has a pair wherever yeah. he's at. Shout out to Grogu out there, like Baby Grogu. Yoda. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, this is all I have for today. Make sure you go to RedDiamondsClothingStore.com and StrikeFirstGaming.com for more information, y'all. All nice. right, cool. Nice. nice creation. All right. Yeah. Very well, I can't wait to see what else you create on Red Diamonds. Let's go. Okay. Well, for today's mythological moment, I'm going into another shoujo martial arts video game. And today, of course, this has only been released in Japan. The name of it is known as Battle Sabers, Saber Marionette J. So Saber Marionette J is one of those classic Japanese animes that was created back in 1995. It was a shoujo anime with all girls, of course, that competed alongside the likes of Sailor Moon. Uh, Slayers as well. Yeah. It was in the Tenchi Muyo universe, that era of Japanese animation. What I have right here is the Laserdisc box collection for which this is the entire TV series of J. So Saber Marionette spans over a course of different series. There's J, J again, the mm -hmm. OVA, J to X, which mm -hmm. X means Xion, J means Japanese, and, and then R. R. So, and then there were two mangas, one called Saber Marionette Z mm -hmm. and then I. And of, wow. and of course, I and Z never made it to any anime, but the others did. Mm -hmm. uh, Pioneer picked up the series and then it became what they called the Full Saber Collection, which did not have R, had everything with the exception of R. Mm -hmm. And basically this is a simple story about the misadventures of these three women with this one guy named um, oh, Kotaru. Oh, doo -doo, right. You know, you have Cherry, Lime and Bloodberry yes. that follow the adventures of Oturu um, as they are searching for ways to become human. They're all saber dolls. They're looking to become human in the most possible way because they actually come from a different planet and they land on a planet known as Terra 2 in their language. But for us, Terra 2 ends up being the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Where so, no women are. That's all right. All women have become extinct. And without giving too much of the story away, a lot of stuff happened in space with some people that were trying to save Earth slash Terra 2. Exactly. And so this game, this martial arts or this fighting game is based upon the TV series of just Jay. And so this is a 3D fighting game. It has every character that appears in the Jay series. Mm -hmm. um, 
specifically JTV series, and they show up in here. It's a fairly okay 3D game. I did some streaming of it a couple of years back, and then I got flagged on YouTube because the opening theme by Successful Mission by Megumi Hayashibara is part of the opening movie. And of course, if you play music from certain video games that are copyrighted, you will get tagged on YouTube. Megumi Hayashibara is a longtime anime musician diva who's been singing anime music since the early 90s, along with um, Okui Masui and Sak yep. Sakamoto Maya. And so that is it for today's mythological moments. This game, of course, only released in the Japanese market, was for the PlayStation 1. There is tons of memorabilia in the world of the Saber Marionette J series. This is one collectible item that I doubt will come to America anytime soon. But if you're interested in obscure fighting games, then this is one for the collection for PS1 and the 3D era of experimental fighting games. I uh, need to play that now because Saber Marionettes, especially J, is uh, you already know it's mm -hmm. dear to my heart. I was a Bloodberry cosplayer. In the early 2000s, I love the marionettes. The The story is very adorable and sweet, and I've even gotten people who um, didn't have the chance to watch it then, because they were itty-bitty babies, like, I've got them into it now. So it's actually a really great series. I think it's actually better than Tenchi Muyo for being a harem-style anime. The characters are way more interesting, and... Um, it's, it's just very comical. It was just one of those great, like, classic 90s anime series. So you can't go wrong with that. Yes. Is this, like, a special edition or something? Because I've seen it printed on the back, not like, not like a sticker, but printed on the label that it's 7,800 7, yen, which wow. I know PlayStation 1 games were, like, 49, you know, 39 to 49 cartridges were, like, $64. Mm -hmm. Is this a special edition or something or just rare? The Laserdisc box set is, but not the game. They did not release a limited edition of the Saber Battle video game there. Though, uh, in Japanese media, they're very known for having what they call spine cards. And mm -hmm. spine cards go on the edge of a Laserdisc, will go on the edge of a CD. It's a special wrapping to show that this is their proof of purchase for those who collect. Yep. So if you're a collector, your items are worth more when you have the spine card on the side of your CD, mm -hmm. when you have them on the side of your laser discs. Um, even audio cassette tapes from back in the 80s had spine cards that were on the, 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 the tape deck itself. And I believe eight tracks did that as well. Don't quote me, but I believe eight tracks did it as well, along with Betamax and VHS tapes. To this very day, spine cards is very specific to the Asian market of sellable media. Mm -hmm. And so if you're ever trying to have resale value to something that is considered rare, then having the spine card ups up the ante. Mm, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Foyer. Absolutely foyer. <laughs> so that brings us to our topic of the day. Yes. Which is unheard of, rare, and obscure martial arts video gaming throughout console history. We're going from Super Nintendo all the way to where we are now. And when I say rare and unheard of, anything that's not commercial within the world of Capcom, SNK, Nintendo, Namco. And so I will start this off. One of my favorite and unheard of games that most people don't know about is known as Rama Half. Yes. Ooh, I love Rama. Um, Everyone knows about the anime, but not everybody knows that there was a fighting video game for Famicom. that for Super yep. Nintendo. Yep. I played Super it. Famicom. Super Famicom. Famicom. Yeah, Super Nintendo. Well. Yep. That was uh, I was like 12 years old when uh, the older kids in my family had their Super Famicom. I'm like, what the heck is that? Mm -hmm. It's Japanese Super Nintendo. Like, yeah, they were playing one on one half, and the, mm -hmm. yeah, the anime is famous. I want to get some uh, some anime sales. Yep. yep. Well, that's nice. Nice. Uh, Rama One Half was one game. Another good game was also known as Fighters Impact. Fighters Impact. Oh. Mm -hmm. Another one after that is also known as a Clay Fighter 63 to the third, yeah. the Clay Fighter series. Ichibod Clay. You know, that has that's long and forgotten. Yeah. I wouldn't say that nobody doesn't know about it, but <laughs> right. that's another forgotten that game. Up. I was gonna bring that one up. That's so. good. I I had a feeling you would. <laughs> 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 I didn't play the game too much. I know that there's a tournament value for Clay Fighter, but I've never yes. entered any tournaments for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if if I can go off of what you were saying, yeah. um, one of mine was not just Clay Fighters, but Clay Fighters Sculptor's Hut. 
sculptor's cut i remember that was basically a patch and an update of that game plus you're gonna like this you could play as earthworm jim in it oh yes I that is true that, that oh, is why that's fine i know about it and mm. that was one of mine um my other one was gundam wing endless duel Okay. Also for Super Famicom. I, I own that. There's a su there is a yes. PlayStation One version of I that. I have game. it on my hacked yeah. uh Super NES Mini. Mm. And it is even hard for me to play. But um I have a Sailor Moon on there. I have that on there. But um one of my other games that unfortunately it kind of veers off because it is an SNK game. But it is a very rare SNK game that never came to the States. But oh. it is very popular. Y'all know about it, especially in the FGC. I just have to give it love because I got to play it. <laughs> I got to play Buriki 1 at Mikaido Arcade. Mm, you have no idea how good that day was. So <laughs> we had some friends from SNK take us out after EVO 2020. They said, hey, we're going to go to the famous arcade where High Score Girl came from. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah. Um, I, it, I was cracking up because the first thing is you walk in and you just get the smell of old stale cigarette smoke and you could just feel that conjuru of old school arcade games in there. And you go on the first floor and they have a gotcha mas uh, machine set up with their official uh, Mikado arcade mascot, which looks just like the high score girl main character. Right. Is it's so funny. I'll have to bring the pin for you guys. I keep it safe, you know, because I'm mm. afraid to even put it in an eat the bag. But they have all these cute little um, charms, keychains, and buttons of her. When you go upstairs, that day there was a Bariki One tournament going on. So I got to enter the tournament and I got to play around. And I know everybody loves, you know, Guy Tendo because he's part of that SNK lore in that game. But I actually went with the Muay Thai fighter because, you know, mm. that was my martial arts. So one thing I will tell you guys is Bariki is so fascinating the way the mechanics are. It's a two-button game. You only have two buttons, and I love it, and I felt so at home just sitting down and playing it, a place I've never been, a game I've never played. But it just had such a natural feel and the reason why is because it's based more off of legit martial art moves you from the grapplers to the judo guys to aikido uh characters to taekwondo and you actually have to pay attention to your vital points you know mm -hmm. it has your little energy it has your heart rate going through your energy bar and you, you have different ways that you can move and then there is of course a ring out system too so that falls into play with your strategy while you are playing the game. And, you know, there are certain moves where after you've kind of like winded somebody, you could step on them. You can crunch their inner thigh. That takes away more of their vitals. You mm. could, you know, stomp on their shoulder or near their chest. Like there's all sorts of great techniques. And it felt just like grappling or sparring in the ring when I was training. So um, Bariki One will always have a very special place in my heart. And the fact that I got to play it last year... You know, it's it's a game that I want to bring to the FGC. Mm. So it is playable. I'm trying to find a machine to bring over and so, have a setup because what I would love is for, you know, to have a salty suite and have Bariki One in that salty suite and just have <laughs> everyone I love in the FGC just come to our suite. You know, it's probably going to be a synchronized suite, but come to the suite and let's have a Bariki One tournament. I want everyone to play. It's such an experience. I've had a chance to play that game once that you're talking about as well. Um, and on numerous occasions, it's nice. only on the Hyper Neo Geo 64. It was a bunch of fighting games at the time where SNK was trying to update their graphical systems from their usual, uh, from King of Fighters mm -hmm. 98 on backwards. That uh, we would need a bunch of 64 Hyper Neo Geo machines to run that, but it is possible. It that is. should be one of the 64 Hyper games that should be ported over along with um, SNK's long lost 3D collections of games. Mm. Unfortunately, mm. in that era, it was um, Fatal Fury Wild Ambition that made the port yes. over to PlayStation. Yeah. Um, something that I remember from the Mortal Kombat crew, they made two games that was long and forgotten. One was for Xbox, and that was called. Um, Tao Fang Fist of the Lotus, which also had vital points and was 3D. There's one character in there named Divinity that I really liked, hmm. you know, um, and 
you have limb damage alert and if you took too many hits to those parts you couldn't use that part of your body mm. nice. and Makes it was sense. good another game within the midway pantheon which they used the same motion capture actors for was called war gods Mm-hmm. And that was like how you had to th- how you had the run button in Mortal Kombat three. They had a button called three D, mm-hmm. which was like a cross between Killer Instinct and uh, Mortal Co- Mortal Kombat. So you would do the combos and then press the three D button, and then the camera would zoom in like that as you're doing the hit string combo, and then zoom out mm-hmm. like that. It was uh, actually pretty interesting. The lady who played Sindel, Leah Montalago, mm-hmm. played Pagan in that game, and. Just shout out to Miss Leah right there. You're not forgotten. You're the true Sindel, so you know that. Not the new people from NetherRealm Studios. <laughs> nice. <Just saying. laughs> so. All right. All right. Anything um, that comes to mind? Yeah, for me, it's a it's a newer game. Um, not that new, but a little newer. It's a simple game. Uh, uh, it's, yeah. Shaolin vs. Wu Tang Part Two. Oh wow! I want to get that. Forgot game. about yeah, that game. Yeah, so, PC only, right? Wow. Uh, actually, I thought it was. It's on Steam, but I think you can also get it on the Switch, Xbox 360, mm-hmm. Xbox One. Um, I don't know if it's 360, maybe Xbox One. But um, yes. they have fatalities in that game, right? Or something. I don't know if they Is have the fatalities. First one? I, yeah, they probably the first one. I didn't play the first one, but the second one I have, I downloaded on Steam just because I was bored and I was like, let me try this game. Is it online playable? Uh. I gotta check that. I just usually just play well on my PC, yeah. but uh, it's very fun. It has you know, ch- it, uh, it doesn't have the licensing, so it doesn't have the real names, but mm-hmm. it has a Chuck Norris character it, uh, from Into uh, Return of the Dragon. It has um, your boy uh, Jim Kelly from Into the Dragon. It has uh, John Claude Van Damme from Bloodsport. <laughs> it's got uh, my boy Donnie as um, Itman. It's got. Yep. <laughs> It's got a, a plethora of characters from every every style of martial arts. It's very cool, very simple. A punch, kick, a weapons button. Every character has a special uh, weapon also. Um, when you block and do good block strings, uh, you can see the different animation that you're doing when you're blocking. And then, so... like, if they do a low sweep and you, uh, you dodge it perfectly, you'll just do a mini hop over it. Mm. So it's very cool. Uh, it's all just neutral based in timing. It's a little bit of combos. Very fun game, uh, especially for like I think sixteen or eighteen ninety nine. Just something to have fun with. Cool. Well, awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, that's all that we have oh, time for today. Oh, for the no, for more. my uh, oh. obscure game, excuse me. One more. One oh, more. Oh, okay. Okay. Obscure. I didn't. I didn't think you had an obscure game. I, oh, I mean, uh, from one of the most obscure people on the team. <laughs> Back to he okay. Is the Current news. Game. Um, okay. So the obscure games that I would have to say are for me that everyone ain't on, but a lot of people do know about. I would say is the Bloody Roar series. Mm. So I love Bloody Roar, and I'm rumored that Hudson has its rights back, which is actually confirmed. Gives us hope for a new Bloody Roar title on PS5. Mm. It's like one of the most balanced fighting games because you can morph into an animal in between it. That humanoid animal version of characters they have yep. the mole, they have the tiger, the lion, the cheetah, um, kangaroo. It, yeah, it keeps on going. Yeah, the kangaroo. I mean. Uh, the elephant in one version of it. it. I mean, it goes crazy. So I have to say that uh, Bloody Roar is my title there. Another one that a lot of people didn't get on, but is on a PS2 import, mm. was Hakuto no Ken, Fist of the North Star, the fighting game. Mm. Now, this is one of the most slept-on titles that is so dope. And um, I believe Arc okay. Systems made it. Um, it plays very Arc System-like, oh. kind of like Guilty Gear and um, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Um, it has all your favorite characters like Kenshiro and um, Rao and, you know what I'm saying, Jaggy and like all those guys. It's really a fire-ass game. I love it. Nice. Because I know your love for Bloody Roar, and I just kind of wanted to add to this. I always felt that to revitalize that game, it would be nice if they made a crossover between Killer Instinct and Bloody Roar. Right. Yeah, Since they're in no, both in a futuristic perfect. futuristic setting, mm-hmm. you know, you already yeah. have animal Animals, like animorphs yeah. in mm-hmm. Killer Instinct already. It would, it would morph very well right. with the Bloody Roar. And to see the Bloody Roar characters oh, no. doing the Killer Instinct combo strings mm-hmm. would yeah. be nice. I, I right. agree with you. That right. would be a phenomenal crossover. And uh, just for honorable mention, um, I always want Ur guys back, so I will always throw out an excuse to uh, talk about Ur guys. Right. I, it's not as obscure to the FGC, mm. but you know, for us, you know, Final Fantasy fans and everything, uh. this mm. is a fun ass fighting game. You unlock everybody practically from seven, and there you go. So I it just was... want to give special shout outs to Ur guys. No, I like the game. I remember it being more open world, like um, Power Stone. Yes, right, right. Yes, mm-hmm. it was. 
And um, the good thing about the Fist of the North Star Hakuto Noken game is you can get it free if you download Null DC Bear. So yeah. there's a program called um, Null DC Bear, and um, that's N-U-L-L space D-C and then B-E-A-R Bear. Yes. And when you download that, you can get a whole slew of games. You can get Capcom vs. SNK 2, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Street Fighter 3, Third Strike, Power Stone 2, Hakuto Noken, um, Project Justice, which is Rival Schools 2, all online playable. Yes. So these are a lot of games that weren't online playable before, and they're like the classic retro fighting games. Some are 3D, some are uh, 2D, but they are amazing. You can get them free and play online free with no DC Bear. So make sure you go uh, look that up on Google, find the latest uh, a rev of it, and um, just download it. It's really easy to get. So, yeah. Nice. Awesome, guys. Well, that seems like that wraps up our show in this episode and this season for the Strike First Gaming Woo! Show. Thank you Yay! for joining us on our journey to see our world and to join us in what we do in the world of geekery, Japanese animation, cosplay, um, fashion, and music. Yes. Can't wait to see you guys next season with season two. See you next season. Bye.